So here you can see a figure in which two elements are shown. The first one is this one, which is the directional element. Directional element. This is the non-directional element. This is the non-directional element. Both these elements are required for protecting a system uh, with respect to directional protection. Now, the non-directional element here, uh, this is basically a basically an overcurrent relay itself. So this is an OC relay uh, whose construction and working were already discussed in one of our previous lectures. Now, the directional element has the directional element is a directional power relay which operates when power in the circuit flows in a particular direction. We have already seen in the previous lecture this figure in which the directional relay coil and the overcurrent relay coil are connected in series. And we have already seen that if both the conditions are satisfied, then only the relay will send a trip signal. Both the conditions mean the first one is the direction, the condition for direction. If it is in the forward direction, if we want the relay to send a trip signal, then that condition should be should be satisfied and it is checked by the directional feature of the relay. And the second one is an overcurrent relay, right? So the second condition is basically same as the, um, the magnitude of current should be greater than the pickup current, pickup value, the condition for overcurrent relay. So the magnitude of current should be greater than the pickup value and the direction of current should be in the tripping direction which corresponds to the trip region of the relay and not the block blocking region of the relay. OK, so let's see how it is done. Now, the voltage coil of the directional element, this is the voltage coil of the directional element and this is the current coil. It has two, uh, again the directional element has uh, two parts. One is a voltage coil and another one is a current coil two magnets wound with voltage coil and current coil respectively. So the voltage coil of this element is energized by a system voltage through a potential transformer or VT. That is what is shown here. V from that is a voltage from potential transformer or voltage transformer. OK, now the current coil on the lower magnet is energized by the system current through a current transformer. Okay, through a current transformer. The trip contacts of this relay are shown here A and B. These are the trip contacts of the relay. And the contacts are connected in series with the secondary winding of the non-directional element. You can see here, which is connected in series with the secondary winding of the non-directional element. Okay, now, the current coil of the directional element, the current coil of the directional element, this one, is connected in series with the primary winding of the non-directional ele element, non-directional element, this one, primary of the non-directional element. Then the trip contacts AB are in series with the winding on lower magnet, lower magnet of the non-directional element. So unless and until these trip contacts are closed by the movement of the disk of the directional element, the non-directional element will not operate, which means practically if the direction is not the desired one, then the overcurrent relay will not act and hence the relay will not send a trip signal and the circuit breaker will not isolate the circuit. So these two conditions must be satisfied. The first condition is the directional condition. After the directional condition is satisfied or once the directional condition is satisfied, this AB contact will close. If this is closed, this is connected to the second uh, non-directional element. So that will make uh, this disk to move if the pickup current is, uh, if the uh, current is more than the pickup value, then this will act. So it is a simultaneous operation.
okay now under normal conditions power flows in proper direction which means uh, if there is a fault uh, in the location for which the relay has to send a trip, sig trip signal then only the uh, there will be a phase change right as we have seen in the uh, vector diagram so under normal conditions power flows in the proper direction and hence directional element of the relay is inoperative so it will not activate the uh, second non directional circuit also so the relay will not send a trip signal thus the secondary winding of lower magnet of non directional element here secondary winding this is the primary winding this is the secondary winding of the non directional element the secondary winding of the lower magnet of the non directional element is open and hence non directional element is also inoperative so when the direction is not proper this is inoperative so the secondary winding is inactive so there is no interaction between the fluxes of primary and secondary winding in the non directional element and torque is not produced and the disk will not rotate but if this ab is closed this will happen and this non directional element will be active but when the fault takes place the current or power in the circuit has a tendency to flow in reverse direction that is what we have seen the current flows through current coil of the directional element this is the current coil of the directional element uh, this will produce a flux okay the current in the voltage coil this one this also produces another flux right this produces another flux so let this be 5v the the flux produced by the voltage coil be 5v and let the flux produced by the current coil be 5i then this 5v and 5i will interact and this may produce a torque to move this disk but the movement of the disk should be in uh, such a direction in in that direction such that the current flow is in the forward direction the fault current uh, is in the forward direction because this relay is meant to operate for only forward fault current flow okay for reverse fault current flow it should be in blocking region so if this disk moves then it then it means that the fault current is in the forward direction if the fault current is in the reverse direction the torque produced on this uh, the torque experienced by this disk is in the opposite direction so the disk should uh, actually move in the opposite direction but it is stopped by the mechanical stoppers so it is stopped by the mechanical stoppers so, so it will not move in the opposite direction So basically, in the desired direction only, this will move. Desired direction in the sense the direction corresponding to tripping region. Okay, in this region only, it will uh, move. Okay. Now, uh, the two fluxes, as I told you, phi v and phi i, interact to produce the torque due to which the disc rotates. As the disc rotates, the trip contacts A B are closed. Now, the design of the directional element here. is such that it is very sensitive and even though the voltage falls under short circuit the current coil is responsible to this one the current coil is responsible to produce sufficient torque to have disk rotation because if the voltage is very low this voltage coil may not produce the required flux but even though it does not uh, produce required flux the current produced by the, the the torque produced by the current coil is sufficient to rotate the disk okay that is why this ab will be closed and the second uh, non directional circuit will be active uh, which means the relay is so sensitive that it can operate uh, even at 2 percentage of power flow in the reverse direction 2 percentage of power flow in the reverse direction in the reverse direction it will operate okay now the current flows through the primary winding of the upper magnet of the here the here is the primary winding the current flows if a and b are closed the current flows through the primary winding of the upper magnet but anyway the upper magnet the uh, of the over current relay is related to the secondary of ct also so whenever there is a fault the ct secondary has a current and uh, this will carry the current the primary will uh, carry the current now um, this energizes the winding 
to produce flux. So this will produce a flux. Uh, and if the contacts AB are closed, then the secondary winding has a closed path. But so unless and until this AB is, is closed, this AB contacts are closed, secondary winding of the non-directional element will not carry any current. So there are uh, so there is only one flux on the non-directional element. So there is no interaction between the two fluxes and this relay won't send a trip signal or this disk will not rotate until and unless there are two forces acting upon the two opposite forces acting upon the disk the disk will not rotate and until and unless the disk uh, i mean uh, if, if the disk does not rotate then these contacts will not be closed if these contacts are closed then only it will send a trip signal it will activate the uh, it will energize the trip circuit okay so the directional element must operate first to have the operation of the non-directional element. The direction of current in the circuit must reverse to operate the directional element. Circuit in the sense the power system itself where the fault current is, I mean where the, uh, where the circuit carries the uh, fault current. So there the direction of the current uh, must be in the reverse direction. Okay. Then the current value in the reverse direction must be greater than the current setting. Then only the OC relay will be active. The high value of current must persist for a particular time period. This we have already seen from the characteristic of uh, inverse uh, uh, over current, inverse time over, over current relay. Uh, same as that only. The high value of the current uh, which is above the pickup value must persist for a time period which is greater than the time setting of the relay then only the relay will 